and welcome back to English with Kaylee. In today's video, we're going to take a look at another one of Jackie Kay's videos entitled The Keeper. Um, so this is, of course, on the Cambridge A-level syllabus for this year, um, and it comes from Darling new and selected poems but its original collection that it came from was Other Lovers which was released in 1993 which focused very much on relationships um, and also has a sequence on the blues singer Bessie Smith. Um, so as always first of all we'll read through the poem and we'll give a brief overview and then we'll look at it stanza by stanza. So The Keeper. Nowadays there are too many things to hide. I am a keeper. Secrets are my caged animals. I feed them things, things they will like. Each day, a ritual. I keep time. Though there are days when I wish I could say, to hell, and watch the entire city run riot with hippopotamus and rhinoceros. A city gent, an autobank, an elephant. She's told me not to tell anyone. I don't. These lies are fun. I'm good at them. Not since I said my brother drowned have I told such a whopper. One lie leads to another, a zebra on the escalator. There's a monkey swinging on Waterloo Bridge. Your face high up till I pull you down. London Bridge is falling down, falling down. I'm losing it. I count time on fingers, another hour when I can't see straight. The zebra is coming down with no stripes. Somebody's messed with the zebra stripes. I wake to the sound of your voice, moving around my hollow head, my empty house. I imagine your house. What colour are the walls, the sheets, you and she asleep between them? Are they stripes? I picture you in this bed, here, my home. Nobody knows, I behave oddly. The two lions stayed in their bed of hay. I thought that awfully funny, the cage wide open. Soon it will out, the truth always does. What will I do then? Capture them in a net of lies. One day I will keep things from you. Okay, so if we take a look at a brief overview, the topic of course is about keeping secrets and we see several themes, themes of lies, deception, cheating and the truth. Uh, the structure, we have eight quatrains and the tone, we, we get a sense of pride from the speaker um, and their role in society as the keeper of secrets. Okay, so let's start with the title. So here we have an extended metaphor for someone who keeps secrets. So we see in the first stanza this short declarative sentence, I am a keeper. Um, and this is where we see this proud tone coming through. We've got the use of first person and these short declarative sentences that are used throughout. Um, secrets are my caged animals. So another metaphor here, very explicit, that these are the things this person keeps hidden away. Um, I feed them things, things they will like. Each day a ritual. I keep time, though there are days where I wish I could say to hell and watch an entire city run riot with, and then they go on to list a number of animals, hippopotamus, rhinoceros, an elephant, a zebra, a monkey. Um, of course, as a reader, we're thinking the, this is absurd, the absurdity of these secrets um, and they're using these animals as a way to, to allow the reader to imagine um, th these crazy and very, very destructive lies and destructive truths to come out and what would happen to the city or the people who have to face them. So. Again, we've got this idea of releasing the secrets and just watch havoc unfold. So the stanza structure is quite regulated in terms of its length and this really mimics the continuation of time and space and that truth will almost always come out eventually. 
So in the third stanza, we see she, she has told me not to tell anyone. Very ambiguous here and secretive. So very much living up to their name as the, the keeper of secrets. They don't give away too much, not even a, a physical description. I don't. These lies are fun. I'm good at them. So we've got lots of Caesaras throughout. Again, these strong declarative sentences, this pride coming through for the speaker. Not since I said my brother drowned have I told such a whopper. Um, we have a, a, a shocking sentence here. Um, as soon as I read it, I was thinking, well, what really happened to the brother? This is very sinister. If they said that their brother drowned and that's not what really happened, what did happen to them? So we have to take into account the, the mental stability of the speaker as well. One lie leads to another. So we've got on Jean Munch here, as we do throughout the rest of the poem, and it really, of course, it highlights this continuation of time and space, as does the sentence structure and the stanza structure. But here, we almost see this kind of webbing and net of lies created. One lie often leads to another one. You have to create another lie to cover up the first one. Um, a zebra on the escalator, there's a monkey swimming on Waterloo Bridge. Of course, as a reader, we are thinking, you know, the absurdity of, of what the of what the speaker is suggesting. However, what they're really trying to emphasize is what lies can become. You know, not only absurd in what people say, but in what they can create for people who are entangled within them. Your face up high till I pull you down. Again, quite sinister in this thing of pulling someone down, removing them from a pedestal almost. Lies and ultimate truths can destroy. So the power of lies, lies have the power to pull people down. Um, and we've got the reference to, to the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down, falling down. It's crumbling, it's disintegrating. And we've seen this theme in a number of case poems. I'm losing it. I count time on fingers. Another hour where I can't see straight. And now all of a sudden we, we see this idea of, of an illness creeping in. Losing it has connotations of going crazy or a loss of control. The zebra is coming down with no stripes. Somebody, somebody's messed with the zebra stripes. Now, of course, the zebra was in a, an, an image, a symbol of a lie that's been created. So here, we see the lie is changing, the amendments. Um, and there's this use of this very conclusive, disjunctive statement that somebody has to have done this, somebody has changed it. I wake to the sound of your voice moving around my hollow head, my empty house. Um, so we see a number of end stop lines within these stanzas. And the person is clearly trying to maintain control, but losing it. Um, and we see this, my empty house. And we almost get a sense of, of a guilty conscience coming through um, or, or feelings of loneliness for the speaker. I imagine your house. What colour are the walls, the sheets? You and she asleep between them. Are they stripes? I picture you in this bed. Um, so then we get a sense of want or, or longing and here is where imagination is almost taking over, taking control, um, which really juxtaposes the, the, the previous standard where they say, I'm losing it, I count time on my fingers, trying to keep a hold of reality, um, but the speaker is slipped into imagination. I pick to you in this bed, here, my home, nobody knows, I behave oddly. The two lions stayed in their bed of hay. So here we have some questions possibly about infidelity. And then we get a reference back to the second stanza. I thought that awfully funny, the cage wide open. You know, the speaker saying, I just thought, what the hell? Should I just release the havoc and let the riot run through the city? Um, but they find it quite funny. Soon it will out. The truth always does. What will I do then? And then we've got this rhetorical question. Again, the internal conflict and questions of, of the person and, and their mind, um, quite closely linked to another one of Jackie Kay's poems, 
uh, entitled rubble, when the, the person is questioning a number of things. Um, and then we see this, you know, the juxtaposition of truth and lies. And that lies will always, the truth will always come of it. Soon it will out, the truth always does. What will I do then? So what will I do when the truth comes out? And their response is, is to capture them in a net of lies. So again, to create more lies to protect themselves. And then we end, and again with a very declarative sentence, one day I will keep things from you. And this serves as quite a nice, uh, strong reminder to the reader that deception, it may happen to you. People can lie. Um, and this idea of trust no one because you can't be sure of who's going to keep things from you. Um, so quite a short but interesting poem. Um, I'd be interested to see what people think they could use for AO5. So do leave some comments down below. Um, what would you comment on to hit AO5 for this poem? What are some of the characteristics you can see here that are the same in some of Kay's other poems? Um, so leave a comment and I will reply to you with the answers. Um, so I hope this video has helped. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more English learning videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.